You are watching Salina Media Connection. The following information is for personal use only and does not constitute medical advice. John Bozen discussed the health benefits of CBD oil during a presentation at the Ashby House Office Building in Salina, October 24, 2019. This is the first part of a two-part presentation. Bozen will return to the Ashby House Office Building at 142 South 7th Street for part two of the discussion, 7 p.m., Thursday, November 7, 2019. Salina Community Health Seminars are always free to the public and are usually presented the last Thursday of the month. The following program lasts about an hour and 30 minutes. Are pleased to have John and Deb Bozen speak to us on the important and timely subject, CBD oil, what's it all about? They are so knowledgeable and will be able to share many, many tips and ideas and facts about CBD oil tonight. And we hope it helps you make a decision on whether you'd like to try it or not. They have been into natural, holistic ways for many years. They both improve their health <clears throat> through using this natural approach to wellness. We certainly appreciate their willingness to come and share all of the information that they've done through their research with us so that we can get smarter. All right, so we thank you, John and Deb, for coming tonight. Thanks, Lou, that was very nice of you. Gee, I can hardly wait to hear what I'm gonna have to talk about. <laughs> so anybody here uh, been invited to a pot party? Not tonight. <laughs> Nobody's going to get the munchies. Um, years ago, that uh, was one of the effects of it from uh, back in the, in the days of the, the protests in the 60s that kind of was part of the rebellion that has resulted in a lot of people paying more attention to their health for whatever reason, whatever path people take. This is, the time has come for this to be talked about. There's also way too much information for me to memorize, so I'm going to read to you somewhat, and then I'm going to have some Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us in another edition of the Community Health Seminars here in Salina, Kansas. Thanks to Lou and Reg for hosting this event and producing it for Access TV, now known as Salina Media Connection, Salina's public access television, channel 21 on Cox Cable, the area's monopoly cable TV service. They're also on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, although they're not yet as active uh, as on other media. And then online, their website is salinatv.org. Lou and Reg have carried on the tradition of health education seminars started by the Mariettas. Let's show our appreciation for their years of dedicated service with a round of applause. I do have this microphone to amplify my voice so everyone can hear it clearly. On rare occasions, they have had issues with the volume once there, there was a screw loose in the speaker. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen tonight. Okay, thank you. I will follow my E-I-E-I-O format tonight. Educate, inspire, entertain, and inform only. E-I-E-I-O. Educate, inspire, entertain, and inform only. Types of products or brand names may be mentioned in the context of investigating the emerging market, but none will be offered for sale here or recommended for use over others. We leave those decisions to each individual to make on their own at other than during this event and ask that the audience keep that in mind when making comments or asking questions. 
I'm here to talk about my research into CBD. There's quite a bit to cover, too much in one setting. Uh, Lou has already mentioned, uh, we'll be back here in two weeks on November 7th, two weeks from today. In part two, we'll cover patent medicine, medical research, new product development, and the future of legalization. I'm still gathering information. It seems each time I read an article, it opens more channels. I've seen many new words. A dictionary helps me define and pronounce them. Research articles may put them in context, but I still need to understand the meaning and use of the words. I continue to find new resources to expand my research. Uh, one in particular, uh, some of you, most of you may be familiar with PubMed. Did you know there was a PubChem? P-U-B-C-H-E-M is a, also a division of the National Institutes of Health website. So if you have uh, an encounter with a particular chemical, you can do research on that, and, on that particular uh, chemical and get uh, information about research that's been done or descriptions of the particular chemical and what side effects it might have. The revisionist history of cannabis is fading in the light of truth. The reefer madness myth is dead as people discover and share the economic and health facts of reefer gladness. Cannabis has risen like the phoenix from the ashes of greed, collusion, and lies. Believe what I say or not, it's up to you. Trust but verify. Accept but be willing to ask questions. Test, prove, learn. A naturopath we know from just out, outside St. Paul, Minnesota, Dr. Peter Glidden teaches on holistic health. He says, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not their own facts. As America prepares to return the cannabis plant to its rightful place and proper use, let's examine some facts about this multi-use powerhouse. So what is CBD oil and where does it come from? CBD oil is a concentrated form of over 100 cannabinoids found in a plant known botanically as cannabis sativa. It's commonly referred to as marijuana, and here just in the last, what, less, not even a year, is it since the Farm Bill, 2018 Farm Bill, separated hemp from cannabis, from, excuse me, hemp, hemp from, from marijuana so that hemp could then be industrialized and begin to be uh, produced again. And there, if you've been following any of the, the media, either online or newspaper or, or uh, radio here in this area, you know that there are Kansans who have or are in the process of harvesting their first hemp crop in Kansas. A cannabinoid is a chemical compound. Uh, we know the elements. Uh, I didn't bring my, my periodic chart with me. Uh, I'll have that next week or next time. But an element is a single item. A compound is two or more items to attached together. And so uh, it's just the name that they gave it. Uh, I tried to find a better explanation for what a compound is, and, and there isn't one. So that's we just have to let that be what it is. Now, a common misconception is that marijuana contains both THC and CBD. How many think that marijuana has both THC and CBD in it? That's, that's kind of what we've been told, and that's, that's the way people have been uh, conditioned to believe. But that's not true. There is no THC or CBD in the plant. Think about that. There is no THC or CBD or any of the cannabinoids, the processed cannabinoids in the plant. The raw plant, the, the growing plant, has acid forms of those compounds and you have to process the plant in order to produce the THC and the CBD and the CBG and, and all the other cannabinoids. So they have to go through a process. So if you have the plant growing, it is not, there's no way you can consume that plant in the raw state either in a salad or a green smoothie or freeze-dried and um, powdered and taken as a supplement, it will not have any psychoactive effects. There will be THCA, 
which I'll get into and explain that in, in just a minute. But only the THC, the processed cannabinoid, is psychoactive. So it's a myth, and it supports what the law enforcement and the medical community and the government wants us to believe. Marijuana contains THC, a non-psychoactive precursor to THC. When you heat the plant by burning, cooking, or vaping, it activates a process called decarboxylation, converting the non-psychoactive and legal THCA to psychoactive THC, still a Schedule I controlled substance. So, similar looking and sounding words can have very different meanings. I want you to imagine drinking a cup of warm milk with a tablespoon of cocoa. How would that make you feel? Probably pretty good right now. <laughs> now, imagine drinking a cup of warm milk with a tablespoon of coca. Anybody know the difference? Cocaine. Coca is another name for the, it's the plant, a series that there's four different varieties of plants from which cocaine is extracted. If you were to possess a pound of cocoa, you'd be considered probably a baker or somebody that liked to eat or drink chocolate. If you had a pound of coca, you would be at risk of being arrested for illegal possession of a controlled substance, a narcotic, and you, that's a felony and you'd be in, in big trouble. The probability that there is a nutritive value to coca is slim to none. The probability that there is nutritive value to cocoa is pretty strong. In fact, cocoa is actually a fermented product from the cacao bean. And we, we hear the words tossed around, beans, cocoa beans, coffee beans, those are seeds, they're not beans. So it, the co cacao, C-A-C-A-O, is the plant the seed from it produces C-O-C-O-A. Coca is the cocaine. One little letter, lowercase o, is, the, is what separates those two. They look this, similar, they sound similar, but they have very different meanings. So if you happen to have the unfortunate situation or circumstance where you did get arrested for possessing a pound of coca and in the indictment they wrote the word coco you would have grounds to dismiss the charges because there, it is not illegal to possess chocolate <laughs> and and there are there's evidence of that in uh, the law journals so why is this why is this important other than the fact that Cocoa happens to also be a plant, a food, that supports the same system that the cannabis plant supports. We're going to go into a little chemistry here. THCA chemical formula is C22 H30 O4. THC is C21 H30 O2. Very similar, but two completely different compounds. You see there's one less carbon molecule and two less oxygen molecules. When THCA is decarboxylated into THC, those molecules are separated out. It's a smaller molecule. That's what makes it active. And that's as far as we're going to go into the chemistry of that. But you'll notice THCA is not psychoactive. It's not a controlled substance. It doesn't make you high. It doesn't have the same, even the same nutritive or uh, medicinal properties as THC does. We don't have time to go into all of that. 
However, there is something that is important about this that is common to both, and they both support the structure and function of the body's endocannabinoid system, and that's where the key is. That's why, we, that's why this matters, because the body's endocannabinoid system is the master system that controls all cell function, and there are receptors on the cell membranes all throughout our body, in different parts from the head to toe, that receive signals from these compounds. And these signals that these compounds create on the cell membrane in these receptors cause the cell to do something, to function, to function the way it's supposed to function. And since prohibition caused all of the hemp fields to be bulldozed or burned, cannabis has been taken out of our food supply. We've been eating cannabis directly for years until that, that time. And so that means our endocannabinoid system has been suffering. Everybody's, unless they've been eating uh, the other food items that support that, and we'll talk a little bit about that, that mimic the cannabinoid uh, effect on the endocannabinoid system. Endo just means inside the body, it's part of the body. Our body makes CBD, our body makes THC, our body makes all of the other decarboxylated compounds. We make it, but if we're starving, if we're not feeding that, then the body struggles to, to maintain homeostasis, that balance, that biological balance that it needs for eyesight and uh, memory and hearing and speaking and breathing and walking and uh, repairing cells that have to be sloughed off because they're worn out so that we can walk upright and we can sleep well and digest our food and have a strong immune system so that we're not quote unquote catching something. Everyone in this room has Ebola. Everyone in this room has anthrax. Everyone in this room has pneumonia and polio and, and all of the diseases. We, we have all the viruses. But our immune systems are strong enough so that we don't succumb to those. People that think they catch something they have to go to the doctor for help with a virus. Doctors don't have any treatment for viral infections. Now if you had a bacterial infection, you might get an antibiotic, but that's the only pharmaceutical that doctors are trained to, to administer, to prescribe, that does humans any good. None of the other drugs are meant to do anything other than to manage your symptoms. And so the endocannabinoid system is, is the whole body. You don't just go in and treat the, the liver or the kidney or the lungs or the brain or the eyes or the teeth or whatever individual body part. You don't go in and say, oh, this, is, this one isn't working. Let's give, let's, let's uh, look at your symptoms and then we decide from an examination to give you a diagnosis. And so that diagnosis then enables a doctor, medical doctor, to follow what's called the standard of care, which dictates what can be prescribed for treatment, either drugs or surgery. Oh, drugs or surgery. How's that working for people? <laughs> Not very well. The reason that it doesn't work very well is because drugs and surgery are not applicable to the human condition or the animal condition when dealing with lifestyle diseases or what's known as chronic degenerative diseases. Those all, all chronic degenerative diseases or illnesses can be prevented, can be reversed, and can be, you can recover from them. Doctor, if I need a bone set, if I need a, a bullet wound or a, a puncture wound healed, if I'm in a traumatic accident, I want the best surgeon on the planet working on me. And then I want to get the heck out of it. <laughs> because from that point on, medical doctors do not have the medical school training to help the body heal. And that's, our bodies are, we have the inborn divine ability for our bodies to heal themselves, given the raw materials. And that's why 
Cannabis is so important because it feeds the endocannabinoid system. It feeds the system that manages all cellular function. And when it's fed, it's working. And when it's working, we're healthy. Now there's other variables that look, of course involved in that, uh, which includes eating well and avoiding toxins like you heard Luke talk earlier about fluoride, uh, getting it out of the, keeping it out of the water, but also avoiding it in, in de, de, home dental care and also uh, at the dentist, and mercury amalgam fillings, all of that. Uh, the effort that we participated in five years ago to prevent or to keep them from adding fluoride to the water system in Salina taught me a lot, but in the last couple of years I've learned even more, and so I will be ready to go to local government with evidence that shows what the cause of cavities are and why, and part of it is the lack of cannabis in the diet. So, both THCA and THC support the body. THC is nutritive. It also has analgesic, anti-emetic, and psychotropic properties. Analgesic relieves pain without loss of consciousness or producing anesthesia. Anti-emetic uh, prevents nausea or vomiting. And psychotropic, of course, affects the central nervous system with effects on physiological function. And this is why the DEA is assigned to regulate THC because of the psychoactive effect because of this property. So because the body produces endocannabinoids and can be deficient, just like we produce cholesterol and we can be deficient, you don't ever want to take a drug that suppresses your body's production of cholesterol, unless you want dementia and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and a host of other real nasty diseases, uh, drug-caused diseases, doctor-caused diseases. By the way, has anybody ever heard of a diagnosis called idiopathic hypersomnia? Idiopathic means I don't know. <laughs> Can I ask a question just before you leave? This, you're talking about seeds and plants, right? And the difference between the seed and the plant is dramatic? Yes, there's a difference, there's a difference between the seed and the plant. Right, I, I, everybody knows the health benefits of you know, sprouts, different types of seed sprouts. Right. I just wondered, is there some kind of a thing between that, the hemp seeds, once they become a sprout, or is there any information about that? Uh, interesting that you should say that because you, I've, been, I've been mulling that over. Microgreens are very a very nutritive substance to consume, to produce and consume. So it would make sense to me to get viable hemp seeds, organic hemp seeds in an organic soil media and grow them and create sprouts and harvest them and eat them, juice them. Uh, we're exploring uh, freeze drying so we can preserve it for a long time. But you can also, as long as it's cold and it's not exposed to air, it's never gonna decarboxylate. But the, the problem with, with the sprouts is you're gonna have to have a lot of it because you're gonna want it, it's, it's not gonna last very long, a flat of, of of uh, hemp seed sprouts uh, will be consumed fairly quickly. But hemp seed does not have any cannabinoids. It has nutritive value. It's a very, in fact, it supports a ketogenic diet. It has high fat, a high percentage of calories from fat, a, high percent, a medium percentage of calories from protein and virtually no carbs. So if you're on a ketogenic diet, hemp seed is an excellent food to eat. You don't ever want to buy ground hemp seed. You want to grind it yourself, get a um, old uh, coffee grinder and put a couple uh, teaspoons or a tablespoon in there, spin it a couple of times, dust it out into a cup, put a little uh, distilled or reverse osmosis filtered water and, and it makes a nice little pudding. If you mix it in with chia seed and flax seed, then it's, it has a, a different consistency, more nutrition, but still these seeds have power. They, it's, actually, it's, a, it's a very good laxative to keep everybody's digestive system cleaned out and regular. So, excellent question, I appreciate you asking. 
So, bottom line, holistic medicine addresses the system to support the divine inborn ability of the body to heal itself. Reversal and prevention of lifestyle or chronic disease is the purview of holism. Allopathic reductionism, what we call the modern medical model, addresses the symptom, manages it with diagnosis and treatment. It fails in the producing of positive outcomes regarding lifestyle diseases which have no medical treatment application. Their only tools are drugs and surgery. Now I want you to think about that and keep that in mind because there are an awful lot of people who do not know that that are in the, the cannabis business and they think that it's important for the energy to be focused on creating the, the mood in the legislatures to adopt the laws that would legalize cannabis and have medical marijuana. I don't want a doctor coming anywhere near medical marijuana because they haven't the first clue what to do with it. What they do want, and we're gonna talk about this more next time, is they wanna break it down into its component parts they want to synthesize it, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you how they're going to do that next time, so they can mass produce it and make a drug that they can patent and charge through the nose. Mm -hmm. And guess what happens when you take a drug? What What do you get with the drug? Side effects. Side effects. Side effects aren't side effects. Side effects are diseases. So drugs have side effects. Side effects are diseases. So drugs cause disease. Excuse me, why would you do that? Unless you don't know the difference or unless you believe without questioning. That's why I said earlier, accept but not without questioning. Make sure that you trust what you hear and get a, go to a good source, but verify their information. And if you don't know what all the words mean, look them up. We have that advantage now that, that wasn't available back when they were bulldozing the, feet, the hemp fields. We have access to more information than they'll ever even begin to dream about. So it's exciting because we don't have to get all upset. We don't have to make accusations. We can create a partnership or a cooperation to collaborate with the medical community so that they know where they're trained and do the best work and stay there and let the, the holistic practitioners return. We want medical freedom. We don't want to live with this medical monopoly any longer. So the, us, the, the naturopaths, the homeopaths, the herbalists, the iridologists, the chiropractors, the uh, doctors of Chinese medicine, the acupuncturists, and all the other ones that don't all, aren't all top of mind right now that come to mind, can do their thing, can help people who don't know or don't have access to the information to help them so that their bodies can heal themselves. It wasn't all that long ago, somebody asked for help from uh, Deb and me about some condition that they had, and they wondered what to do about it. And it involved detox. So we thought, okay, what do we have at home in our pantry or in our medicine cabinet or in our cupboard or in our refrigerator or in our freezer that could be used. What do we have, like 30 different, something like, it's just an amazing amount of things. We don't go to the grocery store, we don't go to the drug store, we don't go to the doctor because we have virtually everything we need to take care of ourselves when even the slightest little bit of upset comes up and in the meantime, we're doing so many things to support the structure and function of our body's inborn divine ability to heal itself that it heals itself. And guess what? It builds on that. Mm -hmm. And the more you do, the better you feel. And the better mm -hmm. you feel, the more you do. And the more you do, the better you feel. That's pretty cool. I like feeling good. I like being able to breathe. I couldn't breathe for 40 years. I could, well, for more than 40 years. I went on a search for 40 years. It took me 40 years from the time I began to search how to breathe to find it. And 
I didn't want anything else. I was in all kinds of drug sales, marketing, multi-level businesses, <coughs> working for people that, that uh, in jobs that wanted you to write goals, and I didn't want anything except to figure out how I can breathe. I couldn't get air into my lungs. I was always <gasps> gasping to get air in. I could exhale all day long, but it was getting that air in. And as I got into my 30s and 40s, I started, the weight started to creep on. And I didn't know anything about diet. I thought I was eating the foods that were supposed to be good for me. I believed that grains were good. I believed that, um, well, I believed the marketing. And I went to the health food stores and did those things that I thought needed to be done. Well, Deb and I get together and I find out she's kind of on that same track. But we've, we've started things and we go for a while and, and they don't work. And so we try something else. So we're willing to give up something good to do something better. And we're getting ready to get rid of something better to do something even better. And it just keeps expanding because we keep learning. I don't know how many false starts we had to share this information with you about CBD and industrial hemp and cannabis and all that. We were rejected. I felt like a, a tailback on a football team, uh, dodging linemen and then linebackers and then safeties. And finally I get through uh, today. We've had, this is the third place we've tried to give this presentation. Um, and we were actually prevented from lecturing in one place, where isn't relevant right now, but in town, and so there is still fear. People don't know that it's okay to talk about something that might be controversial. We have information to share that's real, it works, it can be demonstrated that it works, it's safe. Oh, is it safe? That's an interesting question. How is it made? Who made it? Where'd they get the hemp? Where'd they get the cannabis? How did they process it? There's a lot of variables. You don't just go to the store, go to the salon, hair salon, and buy a bottle of CBD oil. I wouldn't. Of course, I don't have any. My hair is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not finished growing back. I was bald. This, hair, this is new hair. This is growing back. Pick the gas station. Pick the gas station, yes. <laughs> friends don't let friends buy CBD oil from a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> or frozen pizza, either. <laughs> Unless it's gluten free and there's no chemicals in it. We were going to call this industrial hemp. That was going to be the kind of the focus of this class. And it turns out that it was better for, for us to talk about CBD oil because there's a broader application for using CBD oil than there is necessarily for, for industrial hemp. Although, uh, after we're done here, I want you all to come up to this table and look at all of these items on this table because every made with hemp or cannabis, mm -hmm. you do not need to have petrochemical plastic. For any of this. These things will, will kill wildlife. Dream in progress. <laughs> um, paper. All the, the Postal Service could be using paper instead of hemp paper. Do you know that the Betsy Ross flag, the first flag of the United States, was made with hemp cloth? Do you know that the paper on which the U.S. Constitution and, and, and Bill of Rights and, and Declaration of Independence were written is hemp paper. Mm -hmm. There's a long history. Anybody know what happened in 1619? I know it's a little bit far back, you might not remember. <laughs> 1619 in colonial America, what happened? Very important date as it relates to cannabis. The colony of Virginia 
passed a law requiring everybody to grow hemp. They called it then. I don't remember. I wasn't. I might have been there, but I don't remember. <laughs> It's, anybody use Castile soap? Mm -hmm. This is hemp. This is hemp. <coughs> soap with, with a citrus scent in it. Dr. Bronner, good old Dr. Bronner. These things are on the market today? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the we, can, we buy this at Target. Mm -hmm. Or when we're in Wichita, we buy it at other stores that are less expensive. But. Uh, Targo gives you a 5% discount when you use their card. Cardboard. Cardboard boxes. This is a nice, pretty kombucha box, which we make kombucha. It's too expensive to buy. We like it. It's interesting to buy it. But I'm married to the kombucha physician. F-I-Z-Z. -Z, physician. <laughs> so we make our own. And they say all the covered wagons were made out of hemp cloth. Covered wagon. Oh, yeah. The canvas, the sails, the ropes. Yeah, absolutely. Paper. Hydroponics as a hobby. Oh, this is one of the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign. College of Agriculture. Oh, here's a cool book. Genetic Engineering. Ooh. Who wants a vaccine to genetically engineer themselves to have cancer? No thanks. Um, this is a nice seat cushion for sitting out at a sporting event. It opens up and, and there's a wrap for you if you get cold, but it's also a pillow for you to sit on. Who hasn't used cloth bags instead of paper or plastic? Mm -hmm. Easily made out of hemp. Yeah. Now, if you take a bag into a, a public event, they don't want you to use the, the regular ones. They want you to be see-through. They want to see through it. They don't want to open it up. They don't want to take the time to do that. They want you to have a clear bag so they can see what's in it. Hmm. We're smarter than that, folks. We can take back our medical rights and we can produce a product, a, a plant that produces tens of thousands of products that are useful in everyday life, that are helpful, that are beneficial, that will prosper us beyond our wildest dreams. You have no idea the number of business opportunities there are just begging people to take advantage of and start. They're setting up a plant in Russell, you probably know about this, for processing hemp. They're going to hire at least 200 people. Yeah, the plant in Russell, what are they, what is their gonna, what are they going to produce? They're going to process hemp. Well, they can process it, but are they going to produce it? There's, a, there's, there's the, the growers, the producers, and then, because you have to refine it, you have to, there's a, a process to break yeah, it down. I, I, I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do with it for sure. Okay. But they're going to hire 200 people. And it's to right. And Western Kansas, it grows wild anyway. Feral hemp is, is everywhere and cattle used to eat it uh, chickens used to feed on the seeds we used to get it in the eggs and in the meat that we used to eat back from back then we used to eat something that was good for us without the processing without the chemicals without the adulteration without the flavoring without the preservatives those are toxic but you know what there has to be a supply in the supply chain for it to be available for people at retail that can't produce it themselves. More people have to produce organic, chemical-free, toxic-free products so that they, they, you know, Kroger's not gonna stock lower-priced organics in Dillon's and all their other stores that they have, and uh, Aldi and Target and Walmart and all the other stores that sell little bits of this and that of the organic, they can't afford to because they can't do, uh, 
count on the supply. They can't offer it if it's not there. And if it's there and it's not there, that's like going to Sam's <laughs> or Costco. They buy <laughs> stocks of stuff, sell it, and it's gone. Well, who wants that? Who wants to have that uncertainty, that inconsistency? More people that were doing that, then we'd have, we'd, we'd go back to having food, like our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, our ancestors, they ate food. Now, today, food is a weapon to kill you, to hurt you, to make you sick. So when you're a patient or a, a patron of agriculture, you get agri-disease and then you go to the doctor for treatment. Food that's in the stores and restaurants is, is terribly uh, deficient in nutrition. It's void of life. Cannabis is living food. There's even reports, and I, I haven't been able to confirm it, that Jesus actually used the cannabis oil in anointing back in the day. So, go figure. Why would you do that? I like that video online. I've seen a thousand times of that. They show this young kid and he's all crooked and everything. And he's like his head going there. I don't know, he's got some kind of Parkinson's. Palsy or something. Yeah. yeah. And they give it to him. This, mm -hmm. this cannabis oil. Right. And 30 minutes later, he's sitting there talking to somebody. It's amazing. They keep showing that over and over and it's, it's worth showing. One of our favorite actors, Jack Lemmon, before he would start any rehearsal or perform, do any performance, would say, when he began, it's magic time. This stuff is magic. It's magic to us because we know that there's value in it. But it's a threat. Just like the herbalists in Salem, Massachusetts and colonial America were a threat to the sugar producers, the sugar merchants, the alcohol or the rum merchants and the slave traders because the, the herbalist said to the people don't eat that don't drink that don't support that and so the merchants and the government officials and the, the clergy got together and said we got to get rid of these people remember Salem because they're doing the same thing now only the thing is cats out of the bag. We know the difference. Mm -hmm. And we can say no to anything that we don't want. You can be smarter than your doctor. Imagine that. They don't get any training. They don't get any testing. There's no certification in nutrition, medical nutrition for allopathic reductionist medical doctors. They don't get any. They don't use it. They're not trained to understand what it does. <coughs> We're just parts. And if part isn't working, you either drug it or you cut it out. Put a new one in or you put a fake one in. Oh, that's some of the pictures. It's knee and mm -hmm. shoulder and hip joint replacement. It'll turn your hair white. <laughs> <laughs> or make it fall out. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Cannabis mimetics. Say that three times fast. I know. <laughs> I told you, I've, I've, there's so many words that I've come across that I didn't know before. C A N N A. Canna B M. Cannabis mimetics. They mimic the effect on the endocannabinoid system that consuming cannabis has. Now, I have four lists, and there's some duplication, but I want you to know that for whatever reason, they're all connected, and it's not important for you to memorize or remember everything that I say, but there are, we'll be able to share the links with you so you can find out for yourself, but there are actually four 
branches of the family, the botanical family that includes cannabis. Of course, cannabis is known as marijuana or hemp. Uh, Celtis, C-E-L-T-I-S, Celtis is hackberry. Terraceltis includes the blue sandalwood tree. Gyroniera is a deciduous tree. Humulus, anybody know what humulus is? Hops. Anybody know what hops are used for, don't you? <coughs> Fermented grain. Trema is an evergreen <coughs> tree. Lozanella is a South American vine. And Aphidantha is a tropical evergreen tree. So those eight different plant types all have properties similar to <coughs> cannabis. They're in the same botanical family. Now, the cannabimimetics that mimic cannabis include flaxseed. We have flaxseed and we have hemp seed at home. I want to bring Flax seeds, black pepper, hops, mangoes, echinacea, liverwort, rhododendron, cacao, or cocoa, and kiribos, K-E-E-R-I-B-O-S, kiribos. That's the name of helichrysum essential oil. Uh, it has CBG in it, cannabigerol. Uh, from Dr., and that's from um, SOL CBD website. It's a blog. Uh, a book we have, The Hemp Oil Miracle by Dr. Cass Ingram, lists aromatic herbs <coughs> that contain beta caryophylline black pepper, sage, rosemary, oregano, basil, <coughs> cinnamon clove buds, chamomile, spruce tree resin, pine tree resin, and of course cannabis or hemp, and, and they're referring specifically to the green plant matter and the resin or oil, and carnation flowers and oil. Now the genus Caryophyllus, from which caryophylline of hemp terpene is derived, is the source of the hemp oil odor and the marijuana odor. So, terpenes produce, they're aromatic, they produce aromas that we can sense with our navel passages that aren't clogged up from eating wheat and sugar. Don't start. <coughs> this is from Trends in Pharmacological Sciences. Ooh. TIPS, TIPS 1329, article in press. This is a list of some plants, some, that affect the endocannabinoid system. Arctic root, it's an adaptogen. Rhodoloa rosea, rosea. I wish they'd use English words instead of all these jibber, jabber, foreign words. Anyway, black pepper, black truffle, which, by the way, is a mushroom, and we have a mushroom expert in our acquaintance who has, has asked to be able to come and speak to us about the municipal <laughs> power of mushrooms. So that's something we can talk about. I just talked to her today. <coughs> and I need to say something about that. When Deb and I, she's Deb, I'm John. <laughs> when Deb and I say what we want, we say we want to be in the right place at the right time with the right people, with right intent, taking right action. This fabulous woman, Sandra Williams, responded to a mistaken Facebook message that I sent that sent the wrong item. I sent the picture of our profile picture to her instead of a notice of this meeting. And she answered back, nice picture. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, I think I sent a picture of us. So I responded to her with the, with the link to the meeting tonight. Of course, she can't come. She's in, uh, near Perkins around Stillwater, Oklahoma. And she responded by trying to, res to text me back. And her finger hit the wrong button on her phone, and she tried to call me. Well, I didn't have my microphone set in settings to receive calls, make and receive calls in Facebook Messenger yet. So I had to stop and 
figure that out. And then I called her. She said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you. I messed up on my phone. So this cascade of errors has resulted in us being able to talk to each other. That's no accident. And she is interested in sharing her wonderful information about medicinal mushrooms. And so here it is. Black truffle. She has other ones that she will talk about, but anyway. Uh, burdock, carrot, chicory root, chili peppers, chocolate, we've already covered that, cloves, curcumin, a component of turmeric, dandelion greens. How many love to eat dandelion? Wonderful. Make sure your next door neighbor doesn't spray their weeds with Roundup. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our mint plant, our, we had tree seedlings in the front yard, and we had just planted, not four months ago, some uh, sprouts off of an a elder bush to, to, make, to grow elderberries and elderflowers. And on one of the windiest days possible, this woman is out there, no mask, no covering, has her little tank, <laughs> spraying Roundup everywhere. You should, I mean, it killed the mint and it killed the trees and it poisoned our, our dandelions in the front yard and the, and the elderbush. Mm. Why would somebody do that? Maybe that's because she doesn't know what she doesn't know. It's not her fault. She did what is, is common to the other people that, that put five to eight million pounds of Roundup, pounds or gallons, five to eight million, I forget the, the measurement. Every year, that's that's just in the in the residential area, not counting the the, the agricultural use of it. And who knows who else uses it? I just wanted to add that dandelion leaves are also an antibiotic. Dandelions are antibiotic. Yes, they yeah, are. excellent. Yeah, we like the the, the roots are supposed the leaves to be very good for you too. And the, the whole roots. Planet. I can get it clear down and get for the smoothies, time. and then. <laughs> The flour for kombucha and for those that want to ferment it and go the next yeah. step to make dandelion wine. Mm -hmm. uh, frankincense. Mm -hmm. Gallon gall. I don't know what gallon gall is. Garlic. Ginger. Gum arabic. Hops again. Kava kava. Leek. Anybody leek? <laughs> <laughs> You're not eating right now. Um, lemon balm, maca root powder, we add that to our smoothies from time to time, onion, prebiotics, probiotics, the kombucha is excellent beverage for that, sunchokes, another name for Jerusalem artichokes, and the list goes on and on and on. These are cannabis mimetics, compounds in these products, when consumed by the body, trigger a response in the endocannabinoid system receptors, CB1 and <coughs> CB2, to tell the cell membrane, hey, here's some good stuff. Let's do what we're supposed to do. This is what we're programmed to do. This is, this is life, this is energy. This is sound and light converted to energy for us. Just like if you were sun gazing or you were listening to um, solfeggio music and, and listening to the tones of the music that heals, like the Gregorian chants used to. This is all part of our ability to do things for ourselves. We don't have to go get help from someone else, some authority other than us. And one of the neat things about it is, anybody ever talk about something that worked for them and share it with a friend over coffee or a dinner or now we have all the, the social media. How many even write letters? <gasps> we talk about it. We share. We get together. We, we compare notes. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. We have to stop giving our power away. Take it back. And this, is, this is an excellent opportunity to mm -hmm. do that because cannabis is an amazing plant. Um, my phone is not really working very well, but on my hemp farms that I have all over the state, you didn't know about that, did you? No. Um, 
I, I drive around a lot and I notice where elder bushes are and where hemp is and where mulberry is and where sand plum and apricot and plum and cherries. So I'm, I'm out foraging and wild harvesting. <laughs> well, I don't forage and harvest cannabis, but I take pictures. And I have some pictures that I'll share next time of some really nice bud, really nice. Now, the cannabis, when it's green and growing, it's still gonna have some decarboxylation from the sunlight and from the air, oxygen and, sun and light decarboxylate. Once you harvest it then, and you get it out, you gotta stop that process or it will eventually, over time, even if you don't do anything to it, over time, it will convert into THC and CBD, depending on how much is in there. So, the, the, one of the problems with American rules, regulations, laws, research, etc., is that they've only allowed one strain of one variety of, of cannabis to be researched, when at the same time they've been funding research since the 60s for people in other countries, uh, Israel for one, they've been researching cannabis for 50 years, 60 years, with American tax dollar money funding. That's not very exciting. But we can still take that back. We can stay, it's time for us to have more than one strain researched. We can have holistic research Holistic medicine, holistic food, whole body food. When you go to the doctor, what does the doctor want to know? What's the matter? Okay, that's what an allopath, a reductionist, wants to know. What's the matter? What's wrong? So they can examine you, diagnose you, and treat you. A holistic practitioner wants to know, how do you feel? What's going on with you in your life? Do you have any issues that are unresolved? Do you have any any uh, frustrations, or they want to know your emotional nature, they want to know your spiritual nature, they want to know your mental nature, in addition to what's going on with you physically. They want to look at the whole person, the whole environment. And that's the fundamental difference. And when it, what it really boils down to is the difference between following the religion of the allopaths, because they are following a religion. They actually have what they call the central dogma of cell biology. To them, DNA controls life, when in fact it doesn't. You can take the DNA out of the cell, out of the nucleus, and the cell won't die. The DNA is just a blueprint. It's the reproductive program for the cell. You can take that out, just like you can sterilize a human or an animal, they're not <coughs> gonna die. The brain of the cell is the cell membrane. So if you damage that or corrupt it, that's what's going to kill the cell. Just like when a human is, when they lose their brain function, they're, they're, they're dead. That's the brain dead is the, the term that's used if they're, not phys if they're still physically functioning. But we want to do those things that support the structure and function of the body, the whole body. Not just, and then there's energy healers here that know Qigong and Reiki and quantum touch and EFT, and, uh, and then the reflexologists, and the massage therapists, and the um, acupuncturists. acupuncturists. That's the kind of needle I want to get stuck with. <coughs> we have a kinesiologist chiropractor in Wichita that um, I've been going to off and on, and it's more off now because I don't need to. He fixed, he, he helped me get my alignment in, in, in line, my spine in line. And I've kept it there, and I think he's amazed. It wasn't all that long ago. I couldn't, okay, how much longer do I have? Oh, 10 minutes, okay. I used to, if I wanted to go up and down steps, I would take one step, and I'd stop, and I'd breathe. And I'd take another step, and I'd stop, and I'd breathe. Now I'd run up and down the steps. <coughs> I have to watch out what's up at the top around the corner and down at the bottom. Because if I'm, if I have a head of steam, whatever's in my way is gonna get run over. 
at the end of the day, I'm excited. I'm alive. I'm energized. Do I get tired? Yeah, I get tired. I fall asleep like that. I even sometimes, if I wake up in the middle of the night, for whatever reason, noise outside, um, some kind of disturbance, earthquake. <laughs> Before I'm back in bed and my head hits the pillow, I'm asleep again. And I wake up refreshed. Sometimes I don't get as much sleep as I'd like, but I feel refreshed. This, this cannabis is an, a component of that. Any of you who know people in care homes, nursing homes, who are in physical therapy, who are athletes, who have jobs that require strong physical uh, exertion, uh, people who are beginning to struggle seeing or hearing or remembering, their body is breaking down. By the time it gets to the point where they don't have any choice but to go to a doctor or to go into a nursing home, a lot of the damage is, is irreversible. It, you can't go back from that, but you can still make their lives better. You can wake them up. Cannabis is a big part of that. So is minerals. So is getting off of the standard American diet. Cannabis isn't part of the standard American diet. They don't want you to know that you can eat to save your life. They don't want you to remember that food is medicine. Right now, to them, food is a weapon. So I differentiate food. When I hear people saying, what kind of food do you want? To me, that's no, I want whole food. I want living food. I want complete energy. I want to sustain myself by what I put in my mouth. And as I get, take more trips around the sun, because I say, I almost use the O word, because um, I'm getting younger. Uh, there's a chronological age and a Biological, chronological, and anyway, the, the ages that, if you were your real age, whatever it is, the way that with all the numbers that they would crunch about how you're, you're functioning in the world, and I'll be 66 in December, and I took this test, and it showed 59. So I am seven years younger, biologically, biochemically, biochemistry biochemically, which is the year that I started the Wheat Belly Program from Dr. William Davis. So I have stopped aging. Okay, stopped aging. Think about that. Now, how about reversing aging? Let's get the, let's get the, the caps back on the telomeres and the chromosomes and the cells and say, ooh, let's do a happy dance. Let's start moving to be younger. Let's live to 120, 150, 170, 200. Let's visit your grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren at a family reunion. Now, we want people to join us. We don't want to just be like the guy on the Green Mile where he watched everybody pass because they weren't doing the things. And of course, he had a special condition and you know, pretty much know the movie. The endocannabinoid system isn't magic, but it is something that has been fairly recently discovered in, in the terms that, that are being talked about today. So we talked about, uh, raised the question, but I didn't really address it. Is it safe? So you have to know where they're producing the hemp and how they're doing it. You don't want hemp field next to a, a big, uh, GMO crop of soybeans or corn or milo or, or uh, wheat's been sprayed with Roundup and a, whole, a host of other chemicals. So you got to have it, it has to be uh, organically grown and preserved from the overspray. But guess what? They're using hemp to recover poisoned ground. There's anybody here at Chernobyl? Yeah. What happened there? which, by the way, is in Ukraine, which I think is very interesting. It's a nuclear coincidence, plant. yeah. It's overseas. They, they produced evidence that shows that hemp, because of the deep root structure and because of the, the uh, properties of the plant, will pull out 
the radioactivity from the ground and restore it. And then they process that and the safe parts that, that I don't know how they measure, but there's a, there's a process of, of keeping what they harvest from the hemp, because they harvest it, to use for uh, bricks and wood and different things like that. And they, they, don't, they keep it out of the food supply. But there are people that are growing hemp saying it's organic, but it's on bad ground. So you don't want organically grown hemp on bad ground or near bad ground where they're spraying to uh, put in, a, in an oil or a tincture or a, a, a gel cap or a cream. You don't want it on your body. You don't want it in your body. So it's very important to ask those kinds of questions. And there's other processing questions, different ways. You don't want them to extract anything using hexane or uh, chemical solvents. There's a lot of different ways to pull that life force out of the plant. And uh, there's also, there's a steel mill in Italy, the largest, Europe's largest steel mill, <coughs> that they've had to plan <coughs> all livestock and crop production around it. And they planted uh, hemp in and around the several mile radius of the plant. And they begin to reclaim the use of that ground. It's called phytoremediation, another big word. <coughs> Phyto, P H Y T O, remediation. Another word, another whole industry, another whole business opportunity, another whole venture with economic diamonds just laying on the ground to be picked up. talk about how decarboxylation works. Um, history of hemp in Kansas. Uh, there's a guy named Kelly Ripple, who some of you may have heard that name. Oh, and there's a loophole in the federal law, the Farm Bill. We'll talk about that next time. Eradicating Cannabis in Kansas, A Lost <laughs> History of Hemp Uncovered. This was published February 16, 2018. So he's done some research, and I'm actually looking for, and if anybody knows anybody who knows anybody who knows anybody, I would really like to meet and talk to somebody who grew hemp in Kansas back in the day. They're old. They're going to be 80, 90, 100 years old. So think about not just accepting what people say. Don't just buy into the marketing. Yeah, there's some pretty good products. Some of them are a little expensive, but you know what? We're on the, the cutting edge of opening a whole vista of ways to help us heal, help us be whole, help us be well, and to live a vibrant life, and to not end up like many people we know sad, sick, and sore, hunched over, crippled, out of your mind, um, deaf, blind. It's just the body falling apart, and the body can be put back together if you put it together with the right parts. And cannabis is one of those parts. Remember Salem. Remember Salem. We don't have to attack but we have to stand our ground and say, this is wrong what you're doing to the government, and it's gonna stop because this is a plant that God gave us, and we have a right to use it. This is one of the most exciting opportunities for me to share information that I've had in, in quite some time, and frankly, it's nice to be able to say this presentation in front of people because I've said it so many times in my head and I keep going off on tangents because I'll say something and I'll, I'll think of something and then I'll go off on a tangent. Oh, I need to write that down. I can't write it down because I'm driving. <laughs> and so I've edited this. Some of the things that I was going to say are on my phone. My phone doesn't work. Uh, I need a, a battery to place on it. So this is the time now 
for any of you that haven't already asked questions to go ahead and do that. We have until quarter, quarter till, so about half an hour uh, to ask questions. I know that the microphone on the camera is pretty sensitive and it does pick up voice pretty well, but if you would speak, if you could come to the microphone for those that are hearing challenge so that they are able to hear through the microphone up here. This, and there's no screw loose in this speaker, I promise you. So um, thank you for your attention and can you speak some more on what people need to look for then if they want to go buy some CBD oil? What do you suggest they do? How do they start? What do they look for? I think that's, those are good questions and I'm st I still have those questions. I still, I still question the people who we represent because we've had one thing told to us and then with a little bit of research and investigation we found, oh, there's something about this that we don't like, we don't want. Um, palatability is one thing. If you, if you buy something that's supposed to be good for you and it, it makes you want to spit it out, What's wrong with this picture? If you think you bought something that's supposed to be healthy and wholesome for you and it has food dye and color in it, excuse me, why would you do that? Um, how it's processed. Um, there, are, there are ways to extract the vital ingredients that are very expensive to do. You have to have special equipment and that's the best way to do it. It also produces the most expensive product. So we're looking at a lot of variables and it's a moving target. We also have to be realistic and look at our budget. How much do we have to spend? What are we gonna give up? If we have to buy this and we know we need it, but there's limited funds, what do we give up and don't buy because we need this and we know we need this. So for us, Food is medicine, cannabis is medicine, our supplements are medicine. We actually buy less food at the store because I harvested, wild harvested or foraged for so much free food or it's been given to us that we haven't had to go shopping as much. And when you eat nutrient dense food and you have good food supplements and your body digests and processes what you eat and you absorb the nutrition, your body says thank you and rewards you with feeling good. And so it's like an athlete uh, in training. Uh, if, if you're going to run a mile in a race, but you haven't run for a year, you're not going to do as well as somebody that's always training. And so think of eating well as training. And the, the cannabis, the CBD oil is produced, uh, you're going to want to have um, water-soluble oil. And I know that seems to be a contradiction in terms, but... The water-soluble processing makes the, the nutrients in the oil more absorbable by the body. You don't want to just have the, the solvent or the, the, the raw oil. It has to be processed into water-soluble water tincture. And you have to ask who you're buying it from if it is. You're going to want to have some kind of, of lab analysis report from the producer or the retailer of how it's made and what, uh, what does the lab say is in it. You want to know what's in it because you want to know how much you should take. Supplements used by uh, a 150-pound person are used up differently than in a 75 or a 250 pound person. The same with cannabis. But remember, we are bioelectric, we are not chemical. We're not, we're not a mach mechanical machine. We don't have to eat something and have, wait for it to work its way through the body for it to start working. Because the energy is transferred instantly because of the electri electrical nature of our bodies. Our heart is not a muscle, it's a bioelectric generator. And so 
when you're taking something like CBD, as soon as it's in your, under your tongue, and better also to use it if you're going to use the liquid, to hold it under your tongue and let it uh, absorb sublingually under the tongue. Uh, it gets in better, bypasses a lot of the digestive system that would break it down otherwise. But it's okay to, to swallow or mix it in a beverage because there's a lot of CBD infused beverages now that are becoming more popular. And every once in a while you'll hear the FDA fussing and foaming and fuming about regulating. It's not legal to have CBD in food products because we're regulating that. Like no walrus. Um, <laughs> I'd ignore them. If you want to put CBD in a beverage and consume it, I would. I, I, I don't see any reason why not, and I haven't heard anybody who is involved in the industry say that it's not a good idea to do that. That being said, if you are employed in any way that would cause you to have to be subject to a uh, drug test, we don't know yet the accuracy and the thoroughness of the testing or what exactly they're looking for and what's, by what standard they determine when they find what they find, whether they're going to like what they see and say you're good or whether they're not going to like what they see and you're bad. And so some people are at risk of being fired, uh, machine operators, truck drivers, teachers, uh, people in the medical profession, there's a whole host of people that want the CBD, but they're afraid that even with 0.3% concentration, which is an arbitrary number that's been, it's the, it's the Canadian, micro, Canadian wrench in American production of CBD. It's interesting, it's another whole story we'll get into some other time, but 0.3% um, is not a real number, it's just one made up. But they call it a non-detectable amount. So NDA, non-detectable amount, is 0.3% THC decarboxylated THCA or less or they have to throw the batch out. They can't use it. So Uh, organic goes without saying. Yeah. yeah, I want to be a pesticide and chemical filter. Make sure, says organic. You know, make, sh make sure there's plenty of uh, dioxin and, and uh, um, uh, Roundup. Make sure there's lots of real nasty chemicals in there. DDT, 2,4-D. Uh, yeah, I want to get the, get that good mix in there. The idea of phytoremediation makes me wonder if the uh, trichloroethylene that's polluting groundwater in West Salina could be remediated with hemp. If they would plant hemp, could that help stem the flow of it and, and stop it and fix it? Uh, just something to think about, throw out, talk about. You have to be, you don't accept without questioning. Let people who have taken it tell you how it makes them feel, but we're all individual. We all have our own biochemistry. We have our own age issues. We have our male and female gender. We have our lifestyle. We have the other conditions. We may be interacting with medicine we may be taking. We don't live in a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum like a teenager does. She has a question right here. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Is there a website or a source that you would recommend? Or is that coming up next time? <laughs> well, I did print some things. Do you have an email address to send stuff to people? We'll stay in touch with through the community health seminars. If you're on an email, if you're not already on email with them, uh, that's a good way. Um, the uh, the story about Kansas is in Ministry of Hemp. 
uh, Kelly Ripple, R-I-P-P-E-L, um, and it's ministryofhemp.com, you can find that. There's a Midwest Industrial Hemp Association, MWIHA.org. Um, New Pharma is, is the, the folks down in uh, Oklahoma that's spearheading the medical marijuana revolution in, in Oklahoma that's, that's restoring people's lives amazingly. Chip and Cindy Paul are amazing people. Um, they know probably more about the endocannabinoid system than anybody I've ever seen up to this point. We'll make a flyer. We will. Those, yeah. um, New Pharma is G N U, not N E W. Mm -hmm. New G N U Pharma, P H A R M A, New Pharma dot com, and they have blogs and research and articles, YouTube, chips on, travels all over the country, uh, teaching and, and speaking on this product. Um, that's just the ones. Right yeah, there. we're gonna have to wrap it. Yeah. Um, we'll stay in touch and I'll have more put together for handouts. Um, the PubMed and PubMed and PubChem, you can search on, we're getting into my next presentation. Um, but any, any word that pops into your head related to this, search on it and you'll find hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of research articles on it. It's more technical, more detailed in that way, but at least it lets you know that uh, somebody other than the ones we want working on this have been at this for a long time, and we need, we need to put the spotlight on them. So, thank you for asking. And Dr. Okay. Marcola is... Joseph Marcola, yeah, Marcola.com. He is the wealth of information. And he has the CBD. Cass Ingram. And he sells, so you yeah. know what yeah. Cass Ingram, I-N-G-R-A, is a big expert. Um, ben Fuchs, F-U-C-H-S, yeah. knows a lot about the critical health news, the right side for Ben. Um, there, there's more in one website than the people in the 30s could have ever, ever have dreamed. All their entire life span of learning pales to what we have access to now. And so uh, you're getting ready to get started on quite an adventure. Once you, once you open that door, it's going to take you in amazing ways. The first thing I noticed when I started taking the CBD oil was <coughs> it takes away a little of your stress, makes you feel like everything is much better right on target, and so it, as my husband said, it takes the edge off of things. And then the other thing I noticed was it's killing my fungus and my candida problem that I've had for years. It's really, really done well with that. So those are the two things I've noticed. Anybody else want to share what they're noticing taking the CBD oil? Maybe you want to tell. Well, you help with mycotoxins. Mycotoxin. Okay, helps with mycotoxins. Anything. Holism deals with the system. Allopathic reductionism deals with the symptom. Start thinking of being a bodybuilder, building the whole body up. If there are specific conditions that need reversal, there may be a need for short-term symptom relief, but that should not be your focus. Your focus should be strengthening the immune system, strengthening the circulatory system, rebuilding connective tissue, um, making sure the nerves are firing the way they're supposed to, uh, clear out the digestive system, make sure it's working, calm the body down. If you're dealing with a lifestyle disease, chronic degenerative illness, your body is not in repair mode it's in fight, flight, or freeze mode. So you want the parasympathetic nervous system in charge. That's the calming, peaceful, relaxation, rebuilding. If the sympathetic nervous system is in charge, then 
you're looking to, to keep from being eaten by the saber-toothed tiger, which doesn't exist. But even if you don't think you feel bad, and you're in this uh, sympath uh, parasympath excuse me, the sympathetic nervous system mode, then your body is breaking down under the, under the radar. You don't realize it and, until it gets to the point where you don't have any choice but to realize it, because it, you will stop and take care of yourself, or you will stop, because you have no choice but to take care of yourself. And so, build resources, build a pantry of food, build a pantry of supplements, build a pantry of uh, detox, of herbs, read, watch YouTube videos, listen, share information with people. Uh, it's, it's a real adventure, but it's, it requires taking personal responsibility for your health. And I guarantee that, from my perspective anyway, it's proven to be worth, not only worthwhile, but it's exciting and thrilling because I understand why. I am no longer confused by many things that used to bug me and, and frustrate me. Now, am I completely healthy? No. Do I have things that I need to recover from? Yes. But I'm moving in the right direction. And that's what's, that's why I'm, I'm really so excited about this. So, another question. Yeah, uh, well, I... I grow a lot of the, I got like 150 fruit trees, and I grow my own, all kinds of gardening stuff, and, and uh, <coughs> I mainly take a stuff called blue-green algae from Lake Clyde, which makes me feel like 20 years younger. Algae is an excellent product and to consume. Down I can't even like zeolite. You know, zeolite, yes. I like zeolite. Zeolite and, and uh, but my bentonite question, both. Yeah, my question is, is, is there any kind of uh, interaction between this and other things, or the interaction is the same as there would be for any other food item. It's, I mean, it's there, just a, there there's no there's, there's nothing that would put anyone at risk. There's nothing about it that would invalidate it or, or uh, what's the word that Ben uses? Um, Downregulate its effect unless it is wheat, rye, barley, oats. Corn, GMO corn, GMO soy, tainted with chemicals, poisoned with nitrates and nitrates, um, environmentally corrupt, GMO seeds. <coughs> Be very careful of farmers markets, please. Fresh GMO crops are just as bad for you at the farmers market as they are at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Just because they're like, oh, this is fresh picked. Just we just got it picked our field. What kind of seed do you have? Oh, Syngenta. Excuse me. <laughs> you you can't start with something that's corrupt, and then yeah, raise it, and feed it, yeah. and nurture it, and love it, yeah. and have it be anything that's but, like but just own. a waste of time. And I'm not going to spend my money on a poisoned product that you started with bad seed. So you have to know the seed. The seed is is the GMO part. If it's genet not genetically modified, that means the seed, where it started. The organic nature is the way that it was grown and processed and transported and carried the rest of the way. But it has to start with non-genetically modified. Mm -hmm. Where is a, where's a place to get good quality CBD? I think a lot of the network marketing companies have done a good job producing it and uh, they seem to have credible uh, outcomes and uh, good science behind them and uh, third party lab testing. Uh, I would ask to see that wherever you were looking. Um, I'm trying to think, um, there's a gal over in Beloit um, that has, I don't know all of, the, all of the different companies, I know who we represent. Um, but let's talk about that after uh, off camera. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to say this one's better than the other. I just I can only speak about what I know. And turn the camera off. <laughs> so, it's all right. Well, uh, unless anybody has any other questions, that's the end of part one. This was a presentation by John Bozen on the health benefits of CBD oil.
You are watching Salina Media Connection.